What's up, Star Citizens? Astronosto here with a special Alien Week review, an everyday Starman's look at one of my favorite spacecrafts in the verse, or maybe you might call it a space crab. That's right, I'm talking about the Banu Defender from Banu. So let's take this crab out for a ride and I'll go through everything that I like about the ship and I'll kind of like at the end of the review give it a little score like most of my reviews but in more of a relaxed uh, manner like I've been doing lately because you guys seem to enjoy that and I know I do myself. So before we dive in I just have to remind you guys that I'm giving away a Nomad starter package so if you're subscribed to the channel and you leave a comment you'll be entered to win when we hit 300 subscribers. And if you could hit the like button on this video, if you actually enjoyed it, that would help me out a lot. For a channel this size, it really helps immensely. And I appreciate you guys for doing that. So, with that out of the way, let's go have fun and get to know the Banu Defender. Alright, so because I'm a big lore geek, I love to talk about the history of a ship before we dive into the review. And uh, by the way, if at any point you guys want to skip ahead, you can just hover over the progress bar and find a section that most interests you. But why wouldn't you want to get to know what made the Banu Defender the Banu Defender? Systems activating. Systems on. Love that uh, alien computer voice from Banu. So as promised, a little history about the Banu Defender. Oh, where are my notes? There they go. In the pocket of my uh, suit. The Banu Defender is an old design dating back to before humanity's first encounter with the Banu in 2438. That makes the Banu Defender more than 512 years old, so she looks like she's aged pretty well if you ask me. Since Banu record knowledge, not so much history, its design origins are conveniently unknown. But we do know that the Banu like to incorporate the best tech they encounter while trading with other species. That's why today's defenders have dropped the human thrusters in favor of superior Xeon ones. And boy do these babies roar. The latest iterations also feature the Tavaran uh, Flanic shields, making this a true hybrid fighter. And since defenders were designed to escort merchantman caravans, they are engineered to be fast and to take a pounding. The strategy is that attackers and pirates would have to deal with these guys while the rest of the caravan makes their escape. So the Banu equipped these with long range quantum drives to allow them to catch up to wherever the caravan escaped to. And let me tell you, that's a feature that today's Banu defender owners enjoy. I love this. This is, hands down, the best quantum money you can buy. One of the things I really like about alien ships is they have unique quantums that their human counterparts don't have. And if you ask me, the Banu has the best one. And I know what you're thinking, who would do a delivery run in a fighter? But I think you'll find the Banu defenders full of surprises. Welcome to Hurston, the site of this quantum delivery scenario. Also a great place to admire the design of the Banu Defender. That gold trim just reflects power and wealth. Definitely a nice exotic to have in the hangar of your spaceport. And you have those powerful Xeon thrusters in the back, and I just love that wing on the back. Kind of reminds me of an old hot rod. Or if anybody remembers Speed Racer, the Mach 5 had that little wing in the back. I mean, for a daily runabout ship, this one isn't bad. At all. Alright, let's make sure we don't overshoot our pickup location. One of the cool things I think is really unique about the Banu Defenders is the way the landing gear pulls the arms in. before it lowers its crab-like legs. 
As you can see, the retractable arms coming out of the way allows the pilot to get a much better view as they plan out their approach. Something else I really enjoy about the design of the Bandu Defender are the two bulbous-like cockpits for both pilots. They of course play into the crab aesthetic and they look like eyes, but they're also pretty functional which we'll talk about later as well too. And even the way the door is open kind of makes you think that you're looking at a crab. And if you catch a server that's performing pretty well, you can play around with the door and make the Bandu Defender talk to you. How many ships can do that? So before we pick up our highly volatile cargo, let's talk about the interior just in case I screw this up guys. Both cockpits look pretty much identical and they are equipped with ejection seats which is a nice feature to have. One of the things the ship is supposed to be able to do is allow the co-pilot to pilot the ship but it hasn't been implemented yet. You can see here you have a healthy amount of MFD displays. You got one, two, three, four MFDs on the dashboard, which are pretty helpful. And you even have the HOTAS uh, configuration, which I enjoy myself. But the exterior looks grand, as well as sleek and functional. I can't help but feel like I'm flying around in a sports car. So let's take a look at the cabin. The main cabin is a great size in a bulbous sort of way. Like most alien ships, you look like you're walking around a living being, kind of a alien style if you will. But if you ask me, this kind of reminds me of one of my favorite sci-fi shows uh, from back in the day called Farscape. It looks like you're flying around inside of Moya or Talon if anybody's watched that show. Having two beds is a really nice luxury to have in a fighter. In the future it's going to allow you to reliably bed log out wherever you are in the galaxy. And as you can see the Banu probably designed this because you didn't know how far a defender might fall from a caravan. But I think it's a great feature and adds to the versatility of the ship. Also nice that both pilot and co-pilot get their own bed. Notice here to the side we have weapon racks for both the pilot and co-pilot, also pretty functional and a nice feature to have. And back here eventually in the future I'm told these panels should be um, serviceable so they'll be, you'll be able to open these up and fix some of the components inside. Alright guys, let's go get our package and hopefully we keep our beautiful Defender together. A little bit of a rough uh, step there. Alright guys, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous about this. If we screw this up, my beautiful Defender is going to go bye-bye. Handle carefully. Alright, I'm afraid to drop this. Although it's quantum sensitive, right? So I should be able to drop it, I just can't quantum with it. Another great feature of the interior is because it actually has a decent sized cabin, you can pull off a mission like this for delivery. Not too many fighters are going to give you that ability unless you go into like the heavy fighter range like a vanguard or something. Alright, so another great feature of the Banu Defender is the way it handles. This ship flies like a dream. Those thrusters give you excellent speed and the braking is pretty impressive as you can come to a dead stop with the air brake pretty fast. Look at that. I don't recommend flying around with hazardous materials like this, but the ship is really responsive. Definitely one of the pluses. Alright, let's figure out where we're headed. So one last thing I should mention about the design of the Banner Defender is that those arms, while they look pretty cool, are a bit of a liability. They're just not that durable. If you hit those things pretty hard, there's a good chance it's going to snap off, or if you get into a pretty bad firefight. And because the maneuvering thrusters are on those arms, you're going to have a hard time controlling your Banu Defender once they're gone.
Finally, we're arriving at Edmonds to make our volatile delivery on this beautiful planet. Can't believe we finally made it. Alright, well this really wouldn't be much of a review if we didn't take the Bandu Defender into actual combat. But before we do that, let's talk about what it's bringing to the fight. So the Bandu Defender has four Singe S2 Tachyon weapons. Two of them are on the arms. The other two are on the underbelly of the ship. Then tucked at the very bottom of the ship is the missile rack, which is only packing size 2 missiles, so they're really not going to make much of a splash. So pick your shots wisely. Yeah, so it's an interesting choice of weapons that they decided to give the Banner Defender. My problem with the Tachyon weapons is that the hit scan on them is kind of like a auto lock, auto targeting kind of like system, but it's it's a, a little bit weird for me. And also the fire rate is extremely slow, so you really have to pick your shots out pretty well to get the most out of it. Same with the missiles, they're not really that impressive, so you know you want to use those wisely. I really do think, you know, stock it's a little bit disappointing, but if you really want to use this for combat, you're probably going to want to do some upgrades with it. Um, but as far as combat goes, it's it's really not good for PvP. I think this would get owned by something pretty maneuverable with a really good pilot. At least in my opinion. What do you guys think? Alright, that was fun. Let's go grab a drink and talk about the Banu Defender. Alright, so we took the Banu Defender out for a spin today and really got to uh, kick the tires. So to borrow a little bit from the marketing, the Banu Defender is truly out of this world. In many ways, the best collection of light fighter technology. And the exterior styling really speaks to me and reflects the rarity and elite company of its owners. But it's far from perfect. Like most ships off the lot, there's room for improvements under the hood. And as of today, there's disappointingly not much for the co-pilot to do. Now I know in lore the co-pilot's supposed to be just focused on navigational duties, but... I don't know, I feel like that's a cop-out. I kind of wish they had put a turret in there for the co-pilot to have something to do. But at the end of the day, I bought this ship because it feels great to fly, as well as having a great functional cabin, even if it is a little crabby in there. So our overall score comes out to 20 out of 25 for B rating. Maybe that's a little bit generous, but um, I really had to mark it down in the combat area because as a fighter, I think it's just okay, not great. Which was a little bit disappointing. But aside from that, I really loved everything else about this ship. That being said, I think it's hard to own one of these and not be satisfied with your purchase. As long as you realize you're getting a versatile fighter capable of handling most PvE combat situations, but not really PvP. Either way, you're going to look good doing it. So that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the review. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. Please like and subscribe to support us. And this is Astronesto saying thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Cheers.